One of the Cold War symbols, Tupolev Tu-95, is still in service same as its B-52 rival. What really makes it stand out is that it is a turboprop aeroplane, the fastest turboprop ever. Most of the USSR aeroplanes were copying Western aircraft. At first glance, the Tu-95 appearance looks genuine. Was it Soviet from the very scratch? They were not copying anything, or were they? Searching for the answer, I came across the statement that the B-29 bomber was used as prototype. But how is that possible? They don't even look the same. So, let's go deep into this topic. But before we went too deeply, if you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, hit like and subscribe with notifications. Your comments will also be a great help to promote the video. I invite you to join my YouTube journey. More videos ahead. Glad if you enjoy it. By the end of the Second World War, the Red Army Air Force used the PE-8 as a heavy bomber. However, its parameters were compatible to the B-17, but not the B-29, which was a main American strategic bomber at that time. The Soviet government sent numerous requests for the transfer of the B-29s on the land list. However, the Americans left them without any response. Possible reason for the rejection could be that the USSR requested no less than 120 units. In 1944, when B-29 aircraft were frequently used in large-scale operations, their pilots were instructed to land on the territory of the USSR in case of an emergency. In such a way, three of them were interned by the USSR, allegedly to avoid any potential violation of a non-aggression pact signed with Japan in May 1941. The US demanded to bring their airplanes back, but got a refusal. Yet the attempts were soon abandoned. In wartime, no one wanted escalation between the Allies. What could Stalin do with three aircraft? Western analysts realized how wrong they were only on the 3rd of August 1947. During the Aviation Day Parade, they saw the B-29 in the sky. It took several moments to understand that this was the Soviet B-29. Tupolev with his design bureau managed to create a copy of the B-29, which was named the Tu-4. From 1947 to 1952, about 1,200 aircraft were constructed. The Soviet plane had some modifications mostly dictated by the use of a metric system, but the copy was very close to the original. Tupolev's work was unprecedented, as the Soviet aviation industry of that time produced no equipment installed in American bomber. It was a huge step forward both in engineering and production. He completely recreated the Soviet heavy bomber design school and took a leading position in it. What a blow it was when in 1950 Tupolev heard from Stalin that the airplanes like the B-29 had become obsolete. What is more, his former worker Masishev proposed to create a long-range bomber with jet engines to compete the B-52. After setting the bar too high with the Tu-4, Tupolev had to propose a new concept that was even more advanced. Otherwise, he could lose everything in one moment, same as in 1937. From 1937 to 1941, he was imprisoned and had to work in a special NKVD design bureau. He couldn't afford such a risk. He had recently re-established Enterprise, had been working on two projects of long-range bombers since 1949. Project number 85 had enough range, but its piston technology made it too slow. On the contrary, Project 88 equipped with jet engines consumed too much fuel to provide such a long range. In 1951, the Project 88 was approved by the government and turned into a serial medium-range bomber Tu-16. Masishev didn't manage to reach the range he expected either. 
Both machines were equipped with the same AM3 turbojet engine, developed in 1949. However, the M3 bomber also became serial. The T-85 was to become the world's last heavy piston bomber, but after the meeting with Stalin, Tupolev had to close the project. Now he was in a situation where he had a body with no engine. The Kuznetsov Engine Design Bureau had a group of specialists able to assist. The group was headed by Alfred Scheibe and Ferdinand Brandner, who worked for the Junkers company before. In 1946, top-secret Soviet Oso Aviahim operation was held. More than 2,500 former Nazi German scientists, engineers and technicians were brought into the Soviet Union. To achieve the necessary capacity, a new 12,000 horsepower 2TV2F engine was developed. TV2 engine, which was a modernized copy of German Juma 022, was taken as a basis. Each unit contained a pair of two TV2 turboprop engines that ran through a planetary gearbox and a common air screw. Considering that enormous power was given to a propeller, its diameter would have exceeded 7 meters, which was unacceptable. To avoid this, a concept of opposite rotation coaxial propellers was adopted. 2TV2F was to play the role of a spare engine, while a single unit 12,000 horsepower and K12 was in development. The engineers were looking forward to come back to Germany soon, and decided not to mention that the German experience with pairing engines was unsuccessful. In 1939, Heinke OHE-177 heavy bomber was equipped with four Daimler Benz twin engines. The propulsion system was constantly overheating and caused a lot of vibration. Interned experts had to work in a great hurry on both projects. The authorities pushed the deadlines very hard. The flight tests were to be started. In this case, missed deadlines would literally be death-like. The TU-95-1 was equipped with two TV-2F engines, which had not passed their full testing process. First 16 flights passed without any problems, but the 17th ended with an accident and caused the death of the crew. Tupolev took the side of Kuznetsov, who preferred to keep silent about the engine's problems. Aviation Ministry officials also decided to continue the airplane's testing. The DU-95 project was too important. The work was fully concentrated on the NK-12 engine development. Initially, the two engines were tested on the TU-4 flying lab. Later, the TU-95-2, equipped with four NK-12 engines, went on flight tests. Serial version was also provided with these engines. This is how Tupolev received a heart for the Soviet bear, the German heart. The NK-12 turboprop rotated two 5.8 coaxial propellers. The speed measured at their edges was supersonic. This allowed the T-95 to reach maximum speed of 890 km per hour, while its cruising speed equaled 750 km per hour. This made it the fastest turboprop airplane ever built. It also was the loudest one. High engine power and propeller's design caused its unprecedented noise. The TU-95 can even be detected by hydroacoustic systems of submarines. However, SBIRS satellites wouldn't detect it due to the lack of infrared signature left by hot exhaust of a jet engine. So, what the TU-95 has to do with the B-29? It turns out that there is much more in common between these two. To see this, some airplane prototypes can be much of a help. We are to take a look back and find out when the Soviets started making passenger airplanes out of bombers. Actually, they always did. Here we have a copy of the B-29 named the Tu-4. Later, in 1946, a passenger prototype of the Tu-4 appeared. The Tu-70 was a passenger airplane that was completely based on the Tu-4. 
pay attention how the aircraft bow has changed. Its fuselage would be taken as a basis for the Tu-104 jet passenger airplane. Here comes the Tu-75, a transport version of the Tu-4, developed in 1946 as well. The stretch version of the Tu-4, named the Tu-80, was a prototype of a long-range bomber which was to rival the B-50, a modernized and longer version of the B-29. It has features of both the Tu-4 and the Tu-95. We have already mentioned the Tu-85 piston long-range bomber, which was a predecessor of the Tu-16 and the Tu-95. Although the bow was changing, the rear section was left untouched. Replacing piston engines with turboprops allowed Tupolev to, to increase the size of the aircraft, and due to low fuel consumption, its range turned incredibly long. While creating the Tu-4, Tupolev completely rebuilt the Soviet aviation industry. His American bomber equivalent became the basis for several generations of the aircraft, including his iconic passenger airplanes. Naturally, in the USSR, no one was allowed to mention that the symbol of the Soviet Union nuclear might had American and German origins. However, in more than 30 years after the USSR collapsed, the Tu-4 is still associated with the Tu-16 or the Tu-85, but never with the Tu-95 strategic bomber. 